smart homes have gotten crazy smart. But what exactly does crazy smart mean these days? Does it mean my doorbell will get a perfect score on its SAT? Should I get a Mensa application for my thermostat? Is my house getting smarter than me? Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, well, probably not. But to get into the nuts and bolts of smart home technologies, we're going to need to take a closer look at some key considerations, like scalability and performance, low power, heat dissipation, and the proper encoding and decoding standards, and, well, a whole lot more. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode, Mark Ruthenbach from NXP and I are taking a virtual tour of the smart home of your dreams, complete with smart performance and a host of powerful peripherals with a little help from the i.mx 8M Mini from NXP. All right, let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about the i.mx 8M Mini from NXP. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. It's good to see you again. Okay, we are here today to talk about smart homes. But when we say smart home, Mark, what exactly are we talking about? I like to see definitions, too, on what it is we're trying to design to so you know when you're done. You've met the requirements. And my definition of a smart home is you've got appliances that have communication network devices built in that all connect and talk to one another. And it's smart devices connected to the internet in many cases, so you can control it from your phone no matter where you are in the world. For instance, you look around your house today and some of the old standby devices, a doorbell. You see doorbells today. They got video cameras in it. They've got motion detectors. You can now go look and see when somebody's made a delivery to your doorstep or worse yet, somebody's removed the delivery that's on your doorstep. And then you've got your lighting and lock controls and you're talking to your devices and you're telling your devices to turn a light on, turn a light off. But then there's also control panels. You still need to be able to see things. Where do you display what's on the camera? You need to see what the camera sees. You may want to have some buttons and stuff on the control panel. So it's a big conglomeration of many devices sitting on a network that all talk to one another. So in order for all this to happen properly, you really need some decent SOCs to build off of. Great. Okay, so let's talk more about what we need. Some of the key features that you really want to look at and have on an SOC is you've got cameras, and like I mentioned before, security cameras, smart doorbells. So you need a camera input of sorts, and you want it to be a high speed that has hardware encode because it facilitates a faster response on the camera, and it also means less power in the device. I think that the minimum that you should have is a 1080p video encoder, such as H.264 VP8 the standards that you'd want to see that are typical in environments. You don't want to be inventing your own standard. You want to stick with standards. And then if you've got cameras, where's the camera go? You've got to see what's on the camera. So you really want a display interface for your control and display panels. And again, you're looking for low-cost support. And MIPI panels are probably about the best. And again, hardware decode to decode what your camera encoded. So you do need the 1080p60 video decoding at H264, 2.65, VP8, VP9, again, sticking with the standards. So that covers, you know, camera display. And the next thing that usually happens is you talk to your things. There's lots of voice services out there. You've got Amazon, you've got Google. Well, what are you doing? How do you know when to respond? What is happening? So you've, you've got to have something in there that will take your voice, understand it, and then react to you. And typically, that's done with a DSP. Well, you really don't want DSPs. You want to pick a device that has enough performance and power so there's no DSP required. Do the DSP work on the core, and that provides you a nice bomb cost savings and space savings because, face it, we don't want a rack mount device sitting in the middle of, of our thing. So for voice, you know, we think that you know, the performance, you want the Cortex-A53, you want to be able to scale it from one, two, or four cores that you're operating. And you really want to be able to, when you're really doing some hardcore crunching, you need the performance 
uh, you know, 1.8 gigahertz kind of stuff. And now you're doing this, you want to do this, it's plugged in, and you want low power. And low power doesn't just support for batteries. Low power supports small enclosures. So you're going to see small enclosures, such as wall switch boxes, which provide you all kinds of power in, but how are you going to get the power out? You've got a two by four inch box sitting behind the wall, no airflow. You can generate hundreds of watts of power, but you can't get it out of the switch. So you really need low power in the SOC. And one of the primary technology nodes for low power is things that they use in cell phones and things, which are battery operated, designed specifically for low powers, is such as a 14 FinFET technology node. Now, tell me more about those small enclosures. A small enclosure, for instance, would be a light switch. And our friends at uh, Leviton, they're building a smart light switch that has Alexa voice. It controls the lights. It's in a two by four inch box enclosure in the wall. And again, you're, you're in the wall. You generate watts in the wall. You got to get the heat out. So having low power is extremely important. Again, not just for the battery operation, but getting the heat out. You don't generate heat. You don't have to worry about getting the heat out. For instance, on the voice control, I've got a smart home. I've built things into the smart home. And it was kind of funny one time I'm telling Alexa to set the alarm in for me for the next morning. And it comes back and she comes back and says, okay, the alarm is set, but you've got doors unlocked. Do you want to go to bed with your doors unlocked? And it says, would you like me to lock the doors? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, smart homes are getting crazy smart. Okay, so let's talk about performance and power. Okay, well, you know, as we mentioned before, you need the scalability. And one of the reasons for scalability is that as you're talking to your device, it's sitting there listening, it needs a lot of performance. When you're not saying anything to it, it's not crunching any voice and it's sitting there listening. And when it's listening, you want to be able to scale the frequencies down so you're consuming milliwatts of power. So you could be on one core working and all the other cores shut off. You're down in frequency pulling milliwatts, then the user says, hey, Alexa, hey, Google Voice, and starts talking to it. And when it's talking, it needs to crunch the power. You turn the frequency up, your power goes up, you're done processing it, and it drops back down. So you want scalability on the performance inside the chip and and supported in, in the software. It's scalable power on the mobile architecture, and the frequency changes, we call it DVFS, so it's dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. So things happen up and down as you need the performance, you increase the performance and you decrease the performance. And you also could want, depending on what your whole application is, an auxiliary core working and doing real-time stuff sitting there with the A53s off, such as an M4 core running a real-time operating system. So you can shut everything else down and do some monitoring just on the M4 When you need to, you turn everything else back on. And then the other things that you need to look at when you're dealing with SOCs and designs and how much power and performance you really need, what kind of memory do you need? Do you want to use DDR3L? Do you want to use DDR4? Do you want to use LPDDR4? Your performance levels will dictate what that requirement is. So be sure to select an SOC that supports all of those interfaces. So Mark, what does this all look like under the hood? Under the hood, the SOC, specifically today we're talking about the 8M Mini, the i.MX 8M Mini at NXP. And what we provide for the smart home building blocks is you've got high-speed interfaces. You need to connect to Wi-Fi. You need to connect to Giggy if you're going to be plugging this into the network. You want SD cards for recording or memory capture and USB there's always a reason to be hooking USB up to, up to devices. And so that, that kind of takes care of the high-speed interfaces. The peripherals, as we spoke before, uh, MIPI display interface, the MIPI DSI, you're going to want to display. Again, that becomes a low-cost, high-performance interface to a low-cost display. Audio. If you're going to talk to it, you got to listen to it. So be sure you've got an audio output that you can either drive an SP diff or 
uh, typical audio DACs. You got microphones, you got speakers, you're talking to it. And for those applications that require cameras, again, we mentioned the low cost, high performance MIPI camera interface. So it's a MIPI CSI. So that provides you all your peripheral interfaces. And then lastly, you know, we talked about the smart performance. Make sure your chip supports DDR3L, LPDDR4, and DDR4. As the designer, you need the choices to pick what is necessary for your design, not necessarily what the SOC provider is giving you. Now, where would I go for more information? Our website is a great place to go, nxp.com slash IMX8M Mini, that's with two M's, and that'll take you right to a landing page with all the information you want, a product summary, product documentation that includes your data sheets, your RATA, your reference manual, and those kind of things. You, anything you need, you'll find there. All right. Now, I've seen your reference manuals. They're about 6,000 pages. <laughs> Do you have anything else that can help? Yeah, 6,000 page Reference manual gets a little difficult. So in order to help you out as for designing, we have a whole bunch of different app notes to help you understand how to use the part, what the power consumption is of the part. We have hardware design guides and hardware designs available to you. You can take the EVK design and cut the pieces out that you want. All the material is there. You want LPDDR4 design, you can lift the layout straight out of our website, right off of the EVK. It's proven. It works. It will save you time and energy. If you follow the guidelines, your board's going to boot. So we provide all that, and that's also available on the website. Okay, now that we've talked about building all of this stuff, how would I get started? The best way to get started is getting your hands on some hardware so you can actually play with it and run things. And we provide an evaluation kit, an EVK. We call it the IMX8M Mini Evaluation Kit. And it's got everything you need to build and start designing and kicking the tires for your uh, smart home. It's got LPDDR4. It's got memory, 16 gig of EMMC memory, which is big enough to hold your application and any operating system you have. For interfacing, you've got your Wi-Fi, and Ethernet for connectivity to make sure so you can hook cameras. We got display connectors, our cameras for camera connector. You have displays, a display connector for your MIPI, so you can run your MIPI displays. If you want to use a, a monitor for your in house development, you got HDMI, you can plug into it. And so with the board, there's some optional add ons. So you can buy the camera from us, so you can run the camera, you can get a display to plug in. So now you're working with the MIPI displays and MIPI cameras as you would on your website. Best place to go get all this stuff. It's available today from our friends Mauser. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Mark. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Well, Amelia, it's always a pleasure to meet and talk to you. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again on another topic someday. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about the i.mx8m mini from NXP. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. Can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal.